Okay, this is the initial view of the Steam SSE emulator for the Atari ST series of computers. If you're not familiar with the Steam emulator, click on the link in the upper right to go to the initial video in this series. It covers the download, install, and configuration of the emulator, along with an overview of its interface. In that video will get you started. You can come back here and get all the ins and outs of using the disk menu. So let's zoom in and take a look. Okay, let's take a look at the first row up here, which is your drive interface. Now it's first simulating your A and B drive. If you look at your A drive here and you grab a ST file, a .ST, there are other formats, but if you grab one of those and drag it to that, it's like inserting a disk into your A drive. So using the window below, which is accessing your hard drive, you can go anywhere you've stored an ST file or MSA file, or any of the file extensions that the ST has been set up to recognize as containing floppy information. So if I scroll down here to a different place and grab one of these, you'll see that I can just drag it to the B drive, for example. Now because of the small size of Atari disks, some games came on two disks. For example, here's listed here, A and B. So you would drop the A disk there, and if it exists, uh, a partner disk, you would drop that into the B disk. This would allow you to answer a prompt from the program that asked for a disk, or it automatically would run getting information from the B disk. Now after you've done that, if you look right here, there's a little drop down right here, and it will keep the last 10 disks that you inserted into that particular drive in a quick list. It doesn't matter if you're in the directory or not, and it does different lists for different drives. But again, if I navigate somewhere else, okay, there's the 06 directory there. Okay, if I navigate somewhere else, let me click on here, and I go here, you see I can still access the 06, even though it's not visible in that pane. Now, a little known feature here is, let's say you have a zip file that has a multiple zips inside of it, each one with a different disk, like Pompeii Pirates. If I drop it there, you'll see that I can access any one of the different ST disks inside of that, simply by clicking on that particular one that's included in the zip file. So to show what I'm talking about, once I select it, it takes a few seconds for it to extract it and place that in one individual file there. To demonstrate that it got the exact file, let me drag this off of here, and you can see here when I hover, it has the name of the exact file that's being used on the A drive. So theoretically, you could have all your files and zip files, but this mainly would work for like demos, things that need to write to their individual disk, I would extract it into uh, their own separate files. And to clarify how this works uh, for your regular PC integration, uh, if you go ahead and open up a file explorer and look at this file, you'll see that here under my same direct automated disk, there's Pompeii Pirates, there's that giant zip file that you're seeing right there. And you could extract it into its own separate ones using a, an extractor uh, in Windows. Okay, that's enough about floppy drives for now. Let's move on and take a look at the uh, two types of hard drives that are supported on the emulator. Each one of this that can be configured uh, to access different places on your hard drive. So the ASCII hard drive manager is a hard drive that is simulated one giant file that has programs inside of it. What's important to know is you can disable any configuration you have simply by clicking on that box there uh, to enable or disable it. Uh, by the way, you can right-click on the icon here, and you'll see that it comes bumps out a little bit to show that it's been disabled. And the same exact functionality about disabling is uh, on the GemDOS drives as well. You right-click, and it does it, or you can click on it and use the box to uh, disable it. Now, again, I covered the configuration of these during uh, my initial video, but let's take a look at the, uh, how we do this. And we're going to look at the GemDOS drives first. You'll see here I have a C and a D drive on my hard drive, on my regular PC hard drive. And I click here, you'll see that I have that pointing to the same exact place that I have it installed here. So it's pointing to a directory that has those files inside of it. And you'll see here that if I click on the D drive here, I see that file listing there. Uh, this is exactly what I'm going to see uh, here when I access the drive through the uh, emulator. And to demonstrate that, here's the Atari emulator running, and the drive's there. And there's the drive we've mapped, the C drive uh, there, and the D drive down there. And as you can see, uh, those drives are shown in both the Atari emulator where it's running at, and if we open up an Explorer view, uh, you'll see that there's the C and D drive there. And that C drive contents is exactly what you see over in the Atari 
And if we go back to the uh, emulator on the D drive, uh, let's go back one level, and there it is. Shows the exact same file structure as you see in there. So once you're all configured to do that, uh, you can use one for your boot drive and one for your data drive over here, uh, like I did, or any way you want to set it up. So going back to the ASCII uh, version of hard drives, uh, there don't they don't access a directory. They access a single file on your system that acts like a file system within that single file. Now Steam, during its installation, in its directory, it set up an ASCII directory, and here's those two files uh, that you can see here that we've mapped to here. They're empty. There's no programs there yet, but you can read and write to that file just like it was a physical hard drive. Okay, we're going to concentrate on the second row here beneath the icons where you have some arrows. If you look at the first set of arrows here, this simply is a forward back arrows. And these are just like Explorer, you know, File Explorer in Windows. You press forward, it goes to where you were uh, last and backwards and back. Now there's a one here that says to home folder, which means you can jump to your home folder. And this is the folder you set up during your initial setup that says what your home folder is for that particular drive. So to demonstrate this a little bit better, uh, I'm going to navigate down somewhere else pretty far away. And now instead of using the back arrow keys, I want to click on to the home folder and it jumps there. Now you don't want to use make this folder your home folder because that changes that setting for your home folder. But if you do want to change your home folder, you don't have to go back to the options menu. You can just do it right from here and say make this folder your home folder and now it becomes your new home folder. Uh, next we're going to cover this little gear icon. There are tons of options here. Most of which you don't have to worry, worry about, you know, making accurate disk access times or count your DMA or whatever. You just want to go through each one of these and change some of the uh, there. For example, if you click on that read write archive one, then you lose any changes that you made. It will not save your changes. So you got to make sure that if you eject a disk, uh, it, you don't care about the changes being saved. Some of the other options here, again, depends upon your sophistication level. Enable ghost disks for protected disks, uh, run standalone programs. All these things are not really that uh, needed for the normal user. But there are some here that you may want to consider uh, as far as your, your disks and everything. I would forget this one, but the next one says eject disk when quit. In other words, when you shut down and if you have a, a disk in your A drive, uh, it won't be there the next time you boot up. Now your double click action is something you might want to look at. If you double click on a disk, it says none to do anything there, or it can insert it in drive A, okay, automatically put it there. You don't have to drag it. And the third option is to insert it, reset the system, and reboot. So you're probably going to want to visit all these settings that are hidden underneath the wrench icon. There's a lot of them there. You can check to see which ones you might want to use. Now the next item over is a little search icon, which allows you to search for a particular program or game on what particular disk image it resides on. It's very simple to use. You just click on it and you type in a word like I have golf here. And I click on go. It'll tell you every single disk that the word golf has been associated with. Now while this will tell you the name of the disk that it's operating off of, uh, it will not allow you just to double click on it to find it. You have to uh, understand what disk it's on, and then go use the browser portion of this application to find it. The next uh, section of the menu here uh, is to open current folder. So whatever you're looking at in the lower pane, uh, wherever you're at, if you click on this, it'll bring up Explorer exactly where it's at. So you can move things around or do whatever you need to do in Explorer. The next two options are very similar, so we're going to skip there. But the next one is going to be to run the MSA converter. And let's talk about that for a minute. The MSA converter is a separate EXE you can download from a French website. It would convert between ST disks, MSA disks, and other formats. But quite frankly, in this emulator, you don't really need it because it associates and reads those natively. But if you ever need to convert something, you should go and follow this link and download that. So the next function is really a, a internal navigation. You can actually navigate to any of your regular Windows uh, directories. This is your actual C and D, E, F, G files on your system. You don't have to use the up and down arrows back and forth here on the other things we covered. You can just click somewhere and go to that particular place. 
the bottom screen will refresh and then you can navigate from there. Now besides all the other uh, menu systems that you can use, you can right click on anything here, for example, the apps folder, and you can say open explorer and it'll open a file explorer to that directory. You can also use some of the other functions here about move folder to different shortcuts and all that stuff. Uh, I wouldn't use any of these. I, the, far by far the best uh, option is simply opening up an explorer uh, window and start moving stuff around. Maybe the only other function I would probably use here uh, instead of doing renames and def definitely not deletes uh, is when you get down here and you want to open that current folder or you want to create a new folder. You can go down to the bottom uh, of this list here and select new and you can say folder, ST image, custom disk image. You can do some, one of these functions down here. So in the next video, we're going to look at some of the other functions here on the menu, uh, the joysticks, uh, other configurations in more detail. Hey, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like this video. And if you want more of the same, subscribe to the Atari Geek. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links to those are in the description of this video.